And like the the class warfare sort of you know undertones are, are really quite extraordinary. I mean, if it, um, which, which is again sort of irrelevant in today's society and today's economy. I mean, if you look at the current top tax bracket, which is 180k per year, which Alba will raise to 190k per year. I mean, that that gets taxed at 45%. That's nearly half. You add the Medicare levy to that, possibly the Medicare levy surcharge and any hex debt that those people might have, you're suddenly paying like 60 or more percent of your income to the government, which means that that sort of high income doesn't stretch very far at all if you have like one child and a house. Add to that the fact that when the 180,000 bracket came in, I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, it was around 2007 or 2008, if that were indexed, that top bracket nowadays would be 250,000 or more. I, I mean, it's, it's all these sort of hidden statistics that Albo is counting on to win middle Australia. Do you think it's going to work, James? I think honestly in the you know in the cost of living crisis that we are seeing at the moment you have a government that is tax and spend but unfortunately they're trying to do it by stealth this is tax by stealth mm. and they're trying to provide you know subsidies and programs to classes and electorates that they actually you know benefit from and cut infrastructure in in electorates and areas that desperately need it and they are waging not just a class warfare but a political you know pork barreling um, effect all across Australia and they are doing that um, at the moment with some success but unfortunately I think you know they are becoming unflapped and we are seeing that they are not trustworthy. Mm, and I, look I'll be interested to see how this turns out for the Albanese government. I mean at the close of last year we saw Albanese's popularity plummeting in the polls. Um, we also, and this shocked me to the core, saw him get booed quite vociferously at the Australian Open final the other night, and that's in Melbourne, which is Australia's Portland. Like, that's that's like left-wing heartland. And also the tennis crowd, it's not a football crowd. Generally, they don't boo, you know, like they're, they're generally very posh, so to speak. So we're seeing all of this stuff. Do you think this tax backflip will be the final nail in the coffin or will he survive this? I don't think that there's any one error that's going to do these these guys in, if I'm honest. I think this is a successive program of failures on their part. They've failed to, you know, deliver on immigration, on tax reform, on the voice. But I think at this point, people are really quite incredulous. They are asking, what will you succeed at as, as a government that will let me vote for you? Um, you know, like you said, to be booed in the centre of Melbourne for a Labor Party, where each, which is their stronghold, is quite telling. Mm. But ultimately, I think uh, Labor Party, let's not underestimate them. They have have win, won some fights before that, you know, we did not expect and they are sharp and they are trying to put together now a campaign package and there's this question mark about these taxes and anything else that will come out recently that will come out recently. Are they trying to ramp up into an election and get some wins and maybe take us to an early election? Well, look, it'll be certainly fascinating to see how it turns out. But look, as, as you say, do not write them off. Whatever we do, we must not write them off because when their back's against the wall, nobody plays the game like the left. That is absolutely for certain. Now, the Albanese government, James, has yet to formally declare October 7th the attack by Hamas as a terrorist attack under the Australian Victim of Terrorism Overseas Payment Scheme. But it has provided $50, $50 million in funding to impacted Jewish and Muslim communities, as well as suspended funding to UNRWA. So why is the federal government stopping short of making the declaration that October 7th was a terrorist attack for those purposes? This is shameless politics at play. Let's be very, very clear. We have a government right now who's trying to walk a tightrope of keeping the Jewish and the Islamic communities both happy. Mm -hmm. And I think they actually, at this point, are disappointing everyone. And the honest truth here is that there is tragedies that are occurring in the world right now. We are part of the UN. We are part of these institutions. And so, again, um, we have to make hard decisions. But ultimately, you know, the Labor Party at this point has done very little, let's be fair, to actually support Israeli people you know, in that October 7th, um, you know, affair and that what, what I describe as a terrorist attack without any question. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I think any sensible thinking person would describe that as a, as a terrorist attack. And the fact that this hasn't been declared just 
makes my blood boil. I think it's going to really irritate an awful lot of people. Now, James, we have just passed one of the, sadly, the most, one of the most divisive dates on the calendar, that being, of course, January 26, Australia Day. And while thousands flocked to the streets to protest the colonisation of this country, there, are, there were still plenty celebrating our National Day and even boycotting parties of those who opposed it. Do you think that Aussies are getting fed up of the same old woke narrative about Australia Day? Oh, amen. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say, I think with great confidence, the average Australian person is proud of their country and is really sick of being told that we live in this dogged place that is equivalent to a third world country with oppression and all of these awful tragedies. We have an excellent country and I think Australians mm. are genuinely proud of that. It is core to our value set. We are proud Aussies, but we're also humble. And so we recognise there might be some things to be, be solved. Um, at this point, I was, in, you know, I was emboldened this Australia Day. I saw more Australian flags than I'd seen before in years. Oh, I'd wow. seen people wearing shirts. Yes, I was so encouraged. And I think, to be honest, out the back of the voice, not that that was this issue, but I think certain people are really, at this point, proud to stump up and, you know, defend Australia's history. Um, and I think the, the average Aussie, let's be fair, at this point is a proud Australian, but at the moment has real problems, like a cost of living crisis. So mm -hmm. again, these, these culture wars all just aim to destroy from things that really affect, you know, genuine Australians. Mm.